Have you noticed a difference in your pupil or children's behaviour since the pandemic? If so, you're not alone. The Alos for Life Schools programme is a primary school wellbeing programme which teaches kids from third to sixth class the tools to manage their own minds at a very young age. Something I'm sure we all could have done with when we were in school. It's a free programme for schools to use and it's Alos for Life's mission to reach every child in Ireland with it. The programme is designed to equip children with the tools and skills to navigate the ups and downs of life by building emotional resilience, emotional literacy and emotional awareness. All you need is a screen, audio speakers and an internet connection. For more information on the Alust for Life Schools programme, you can visit the Alust for Life website or email the team directly at alflschools at alustforlife.com. If you would like to provide future generations in Ireland with the resources to be effective guardians of their own minds, then the Alust for Life Schools programme is for you. Galair and welcome to the Loaf of Bread GA podcast, slicing into the GA of the past, present and future. Join me, Jason Keelan, as we cut into the largest loaf of bread known to mankind. Hello, Diagwitch, Bonjour, Ni Hao, Konnichiwa, Guten Tag and Privyat to you all wherever you're listening in. What started as a message to 10 clubs has now expanded to more than 50 clubs globally from all continents. The journey through Loaf 2 GA Global continues this week as we move on to our next destination, the GA World. So come with me on the GA journey of a lifetime and meet clubs from Canada to Argentina, South Africa to Gibraltar, Bermuda to the North Pole, New Zealand to Kuwait, Knoxville to Qatar and literally everywhere in between. So grab the passports, grab the bags, it's time to go. On Slice 52, I chat to James from Monaghan, Aoife from Tullamore in County Offaly, and Levi from Malahide in Dublin to find out the crack in Sharjah Gales in the Middle East. We chat about the mad crowd celebrations in Bahrain, the rivalry with Abu Dhabi and Afina, the Sharjah Wanderers Rugby Club, Levi dropping the hurl and kicking the Schlitter, the club's 10th anniversary in 2022, standing for our round of Ian before finals, the Sharjah Gales club song, local Mullingar ladies Neve and Kira at the club, and the new quickfire question about GA tattoos and the incredible answer from Levi, and a little about James's club selection in Monaghan, Eva's home of Cap and Kerr, and Levi's club St. Sylvester's. Don't miss it, it's fantastic. But first as always, let's head back out to the Middle East once again and catch up with all the goings on in Sharjah. Bon soltos. Welcome back to the Middle East. So far on the trip we've met Jumeirah Gales, Kerry Middle East, Kuwait Harps and Clan Nahoman. And now we're going to meet the gang at Sharjah. Sharjah itself is the third largest city in the UAE after Dubai and Abu Dhabi, with no surprise there. It is considered the cultural capital of the region and was the Islamic culture capital in 2014. A little under a million people live in the city region and the Muslims rules are adhered to strictly with alcohol only being allowed with a license. Even restaurants and hotels generally don't serve it. The meaning of the name Sharjah is ambiguous and ranges from an old god worshipped in ancient times down to the more plausible meaning of being simply East, as Shark is the word for East in Arabic. Despite being occupied for more than 5200 years, it wasn't until the late 17th and early 18th century that the region formed some kind of independence. It wasn't until 1720 that a form of actual autonomy was declared for Sharjah by the Kawasim people. Positioning of Sharjah was important especially during the time when trade with India seemed essential for so many. The townland continued to grow and developed various shops and a full bazaar in the area. When World War II broke out, the messages of the Nazi party were commonly broadcast across the area which may seem a bit perplexing. It was the Nazi propaganda machine which made its way into the hierarchy of the rulers in the area But due to the messages being very anti-British and anti-imperial, the Emirati people seemed to be happy enough to hear them. When Britain confronted the ruling sheikh and his secretary, they denied allegations of change in sides. Eventually, fearing a backlash, the secretary stopped broadcasting the speeches, and the Nazism died down. In 1971, the United Arab Emirates was formed officially, and Sharjah took its place among the original six, 
with Raz al Khaimah joining the following year when Iran essentially annexed their lands. Today, ruling Sheikh Sultan bin Mohammed al Qasimi is the main man in charge. The areas are easily named and navigated, such as Bank Street, Mahatta Fort, and the aptly named Smile You're in Charge of Roundabout. We'd love that here in Mullingar, in the literal town of roundabouts. This, of course, being the opposite of the piss off and turn green roundabout at the Dunkettle Interchange down in Cork. Of course, the Sharjah Mosque and the Noor al Mosques dominate the skyline in terms of place of worship, while an Armenian and Orthodox church are both recognisable. In terms of famous names, well, other than the Al Qasimi family, I can't say any others are well known. But in terms of sport, the cricket stadium is the main centre of activity, having hosted over 200 one day internationals and four test matches. In recent times, the UAE cricket side has come up against Ireland on a number of occasions as we find ourselves at similar levels. Sharjah Gales was founded in 2012 and are based in the Sharjah Wanderers Rugby Club, which you'll hear mentioned also. Although a smaller club in the region as such, nobody can argue with the success they have made on the pitch and in growing the club, as you'll hear now. They aren't to be beaten off the pitch either. So, to that end, let's meet Levi, Eve and James to find out all the crack in Sharjah with the Gales. You're what part of modern are you from originally? Um, just besides Scottstown, Thurman House, uh, my whole family would now be part of Scottstown and that there, like so. All right, I, went, I decided to switch clubs, go for a small junior clubs, so did so. And did that go down well with the family, or ah, it's grand, didn't go as well down with the neighbors and that there, now, so it didn't but... <laughs> say not, yeah, it's up in the, the tribal parts of modern, yeah, yeah. Sure. And uh, who else did you say there's a uh, third person coming on, is there? Hi. Yeah, should be long f- yeah, Levi should be long in a few mo- moments. She started camogie training there this evening, went to the football training after it, and then she went to rugby training after. So, <laughs> an all rounder. Whereabouts is she from originally? Or? She's from Dublin, Malahide, I think it is. Well, yeah. not, a, not a name associated with Malahide too much. <laughs> oh, no, not really, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Aoife, so. you're there, are you? Oh, sorry, yeah, I don't know, my internet let me down there for a second, but I think I should be good now. I mean, they all use that excuse, they always say the internet's broken, they don't want to come on yeah. It actually is, I'm very far away from the um, from the actual Wi-Fi thing here, but I think I should be fine now. Can you hear me okay, yeah? Ah, we can do, yeah. Where about you from? I am from Moore, County Offaly. So the Moore, is it? Or road? I'm trying to get a better connection here. I heard County Offaly, that's a bad start anyway, so... Off <laughs> yeah. on the up, so they are now. So I believe, anyway. Yeah, R- rumor has it they are. <laughs> so just like play, anyway. I don't like admitting that they're on the up, you know. But uh, ah, it's nice yeah. to see them at the same time, you know. Yeah. We haven't got a whole lot going on around the Midlands lately. It's nice to get a bit of success. So, uh, old traditional, one of the old traditional counties making a bit of a revival, anyway. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, two seconds. No bother. If you're back with us here. I said I'd come in from a different device. I should be good now. <laughs> Sorry oh. about that. No, you're grand. You're grand. <laughs> Did you say Tullamore Sorry. or Road? I said Tullamore. Yeah, Tullamore and Offaly, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, not too bad. So you know, uh, would you know Anton Sullivan and Owen Carroll and the lads who run Ace? Yeah, Sorry, yeah, of course, yeah. Or, yeah. Owen's my next door neighbour. I was in, uh, I would have been in school with Owen. He, we're from the same, he's literally down the road from me. Oh, great. And uh, yeah, yeah. played any rugby at Tullamore or anything, no? No, never actually tried the rugby now, but they have a great <laughs> club in there. They have some club. Yeah, it's huge, yeah. Um, you know, Mullingar, they would be fairly fairly big rivals anyway over the years, as, as much as I remember. Yeah, so, um, definitely. And Levi, you're there, are you? I am, sorry. I was just that rugby training, so I was legging it around. <laughs> I, heard, I heard you're an all-rounder, yeah. You've gone from Camogie to football to rugby. <laughs> Oh, that's it. <laughs> An attempt, anyway. And you're from Dublin originally, is it? From Dublin, yeah. Uh, Malahide. All right. The Sylvester's. Nice oh, Sylvester's. Oh, yeah. Jesus, <laughs> the nice yeah. part. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, right, Jess. And uh, <laughs> I suppose I should ask you, James, what brought you out to Sharjah in the first place? Uh, what took me out to Sharjah? Um, I suppose I have a friend from college, uh, Rebecca Hannity. She was out in Sharjah already. Um, so I've been keeping in touch with her and uh, she was telling me a little bit about Charge and all that there 
Um, so I sort of took a notion to follow her out um, my own home club. I think it's sort of something that I find in common with a couple of different lads I've met out here over the last couple of years is that uh, they might give a few good years to the club and that there and then it doesn't quite work out for them in terms of winning a few trophies and that there. So uh, like the rest of them, I was talking ocean, right? I need a bit of a change up here and uh, decided to head abroad for a while and try and get play a bit of ball up try and play a bit of football abroad or just try try something new, do a bit of travelling and all that there. Mm. And what what kind of what kind of work are you in? Uh, I'm PE teacher here in Dubai at the minute, so I am so I was uh, elsewhere for a few years, but I'm in Dubai now, so I am. Uh, so I've been out here this is my fourth year out here now in charge of so it is. So four bad. years. Supposed to be supposed to be here for two. I mean, most people usually stay for an extra one and add, an, yeah. add another one to that there. So, you know. Yeah, I could write a book on the amount of people around the world who have chatted to who said, yeah, I went out for, for one month and then I went for a pint and I've been here 15 years later. So yeah, <laughs> you're, you're definitely part of that gang anyway. So he for you in the same boat, are you teaching her? Yeah, I'm the same and I'm out the same same length of time as James as well. I came out here, I had a year of work done at home mm-hmm. and then I came out after a year at home it turned me. It turned me off at that quick. After one year, I had to get out. <laughs> You're on so your own there. I, yeah, exactly. Um. So, yeah, I'm out here. My fourth year. I'm a science teacher. I'm also in Dubai as well. But not too bad. Um. If you came home now, you get plenty of work. Just letting you know because <laughs> there isn't a sub going in this country at the moment. Uh, my school has a job until the end of the year. If either of you are interested, so uh, we can't fill it. Literally, nobody to take it. So it's. Oh, what it's are you <laughs> uh, I'm offering absolutely nothing. Um, nice views of the Phoenix Park if you're interested. Uh, that's about the height of it. So, uh, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's pretty bad here, and it's only getting worse. There's more people heading out nearly every day at this stage. So, and uh, <laughs> Levi, what about you from Malahide? You are teaching as well. Yeah, well, I started off the same as the guys, so I'm in my sixth year now. So I think I was out a year before that the other two were. Um, so I originally came out for a teaching job and like that I was coming out for one year I kind of thought it was like a J1 you know the way you like you go and you have to come back so that's what I kind of thought it was like and then I was here for a week and I was like oh geez I'm not coming home <laughs> um, so yeah I started off teaching and then like kind of from GAA and Charge of Gales I got out of teaching and got into some other jobs and management so now I'm doing that in Dubai as well. Nice and you've gone football camogie and rugby training in the past what two hours three hours <laughs> yeah started at five finished at around quarter to nine and then uh, thankfully the rugby pitch is very close to my house unlike the GA pitch so got home just in time to hop on here you're probably going to tell me you were at the gym this morning as well beforehand were you I wish I wish <laughs> <laughs> I, I have the energy to I have to go play five side in a while I have the energy to move my legs never mind go out and do three <laughs> sessions of training Jesus Christ um, oh, fair play to you good, good commitment well it's a great anyway. excuse to like not have to go do the runs I'm like oh, I'm going to rugby training I'm not going to do these runs I'll skip these here <laughs> yeah is the rugby club linked to the GA club in any way or are you separate we've different ones so um I used to play out in Sharjah as well. So our football, our GA and our camogie and hurling is all based out in Sharjah. And just unfortunately, the rugby, the ladies rugby isn't up and running there anymore. So I've just moved on into a different club. Okay. But it used to be, and a good few of us used to play the two and they kind of complement each other that we'd kind of try and encourage the players to play with them and vice versa. Hmm. Are you sevens or fifteens or? Sevens. Sevens, oh yeah, that's always great crack to watch as well. I don't know how anyone plays sevens, so I wouldn't have the energy to look at sevens. <laughs> Very fast. Play. Yeah, it's insane, yeah. What's the numbers like, uh, James, in the club at the moment for you guys in? Um, at the minute, I think we've got about 12 teams. Uh, is that all? Between, <laughs> sorry? Is that all, is it? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, we've got 12, 13 teams there at the minute, so we do, so it's different. You probably know from talking to other clubs out here, it's like, 12 players per team and then as we go down to the lower grades the junior and social we've got probably more than 12 per panel there so we do um, so let's say what we've got about 120, 130 40 members uh, roughly but then we'd also have uh, quite a few um, sort of non-playing members as well hmm. so we'd be one of the biggest clubs in the UE there at the minute so we would probably third or fourth behind the Fane and the Bike Kelsen out there so we would yeah um, 
So we get a lot of fresh young teachers usually out every year. We the, we get a high turnover with teachers. You know, we get a few come out every year, and then after a the year or two, they tend to like to move closer to Dubai. Um, but you know, we usually hold steady around the 12, 11, 12, 13 teams. So we do. So yeah. It's, and what's your what's your distance wise for people who don't know, like Dubai, how far away are you talking? Uh, well, if we can avoid the Sharjah traffic, um, <laughs> it'd probably be about 30 minutes. Uh, but oh, right. tra- driving out to train in there, this usually it was about 30 minutes. But if you hit the traffic, you could be an hour driving out to train and that there. So, yeah, yeah, happens. it religiously takes me an hour and 15 minutes to get there. <laughs> yeah, it sounds yeah. like driving, driving from Mulligar to Chapel is it every morning for me. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, <laughs> should, should take me about 40 minutes, but can take up to four days to get there. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but I think what what James caught like touched on there that he was saying that there's like such a massive turnover and stuff mm. like that out here. I think even it's such a testament to Charge Gales at the moment that so many players are traveling from the likes of Dubai because in Dubai you've your pick of clubs like there's three yeah. four clubs that you can you can join and I know even for the three of us that we are making that commute out to twice a week and like there'd be players that are junior and social that are also making that trip out every week. So it's, it's a massive compliment to the club that people are sticking with their roots as well. Yeah. Amazing. Have you... Uh, have um, was, go on, yeah, sorry. I'd have to, sorry, I'd have to laugh because uh, one of the lads uh, started, he was playing with us before, uh, then he moved closer to Dubai. He's living way down right beside Jamera and Dubai Cals. And he, he went to a couple of trainings with Jamera Gales, a couple of trainings with Dubai Cals. And uh, I think it was Jamara Gales because I work with one of the guys from there. They were fairly, uh, they had it in their heads that he was staying with them. And then the next day I went to train and he was back with us since So <laughs> he was willing to make the 40, 40, 45 minute drive back out to Sharjah Soils instead of staying he with them. So, so if, if you're, that's your way of saying you're better than Jamara and Gales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You yeah. like to think so. Basically, basically yep. yeah. Yeah, I haven't That's had a nice. I haven't had Dubai Kels on. I had Jamir on, all right. Uh, Naomi and the gang came on. Um, yeah, they talked themselves up pretty well too. So th- the <laughs> rivalry, the rivalry in the Middle East is probably more intense. I think, yeah, I think it's more intense in the Middle East than anywhere else in the world by the sound of it. Um, I and, live in a house with four Jamir <laughs> Gales, so it's it's very controversial. <laughs> is that why you've put a load of blankets around the door and and barricades That's and stuff it. in? Is it? But yeah. you know what? I actually, <laughs> I actually just came into the house there, and there's boxes and boxes of O'Neill's gear here. So they must have gotten an order. So if we want to take any, James, let me know. <laughs> I hear if you want to send any back home here, send us a few as well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll wear it over here so um oh, that's uh-huh. class yeah no i i i suppose that's a good good way of saying there's a bit of bit of a rivalry between you i might come back to that in uh in a few minutes as well yeah. i uh i know you're saying oh, about um, people, teachers coming out and stuff you've had a uh, at least two westmead women that i know in your books in the past few years you had kira blundell and neve spellman um that mm-hmm. any of you played with them or do you know them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Eve is frankly nodding there <laughs> <laughs> back out <laughs> I was actually I only text after our first tournament last week I text Kira saying any chance you'd get a fight out for the next tournament and um, they're they're greatly missed like some great great Westmead were out here and um, even Neve's sister Kleena was here Katie Deegan from Mullingar was a girl from Castle Pollard and um, you don't want Serena her Dern. leave her over it was a uh, great yeah. great crew of Westmead out here maybe two years ago um, and they they con- contributed massively to the club in terms of socially and in terms of the, the football and talent. Like, you know, I, I don't know if like I've ever played with such a team, you know, w- w- when mm. those girls were over here. And look at the testament to them as well, that they were involved in the All-Ireland winning, winning team this year as well. You know, it just shows mm-hmm. the talent that, that can come, yeah. come out here, you know. Yeah, I'd say the social side, they've no bother helping on that end. Um, <laughs> by, the, by most of their Instagram pages, I'm sure that's no bother. Neve actually teaches with my sister in law, um, which is why I was Ooh. curious to know um, how she got on. Because when, when you Google Charlie <laughs> Gales, funnily enough, her picture of her and Kira actually pops up, um, which is how yeah. I discovered that, they, uh, that they're there. Have you most counties represented, Steve, on the ladies' side? or? Um, it kind of changes every year, as James mm. said. Like the turnover mm. is there, you know, but in fairness, Oh, the Midlands has held our own now over the last few years. <laughs> We've definitely held our own. We're, we're, there's some Dublin accents coming in there with Levi and a few a few uh, Donegal accents and up there. But 
Um, ah, you get a great mix. Like you, you really do. You can, you know, some years you might have more from south of Ireland, sometimes more from the the north of Ireland or the west. But mm. everyone definitely is well represented. I think, yeah. Yeah. Is there a? It's one thing I've kind of noticed in the Middle East, and even when your Instagram, not you guys, but most of the teams' Instagram posts go up. Most of the teams are almost exclusively Irish people, whereas everywhere else in the world, it's like there's, you know, random people from everywhere. Is it just there's yeah. so many Irish to make the teams or is it just the locals aren't particularly arse getting involved, really? I just think out in the UAE, <laughs> there's so much sport, like especially in the different places that some of the clubs train, like where we training tonight, there was soccer going on. There's like men's rugby going on. There's also mm. there's cricket. There's so much on offer. So I think people just kind of, well, what we've always experienced is just that any of the locals or even any of the, like some of the people that be working in the same area and stuff like that, they, they kind of stick to what they know. Yeah. Have you managed to coax any locals in or is it a waste of time? <laughs> I've had a few over the years, but it's sort of been one or two. Um, and I think there's been another couple that have shown interest, but they tend to come maybe for a couple of training sessions. And then as Levi said, they probably just move on to playing soccer or something because mm. The biggest challenge for a lot of them is that even within our club or a lot of the clubs in the Middle East is that when guys are coming out, a lot of the training is actually to a fairly high standard to like senior club. You've got boys that uh, could play easily county standard um, at home. I think it's uh, when they come into the training with the Middle East clubs, um, it can be hard to try and adjust to the new skills and that there and trying to get blend in with the rest of the guys because everybody else is sort of fairly more advanced at the skill. So um, I think if there's a bit more, I think I know like the likes of Q8, um, mm-hmm. I think they'd be very good for um, for more locals taking part because they're a much smaller club. Yeah. The same would be with Bria and um, maybe Oman as well. Um, where it's more probably less Irish there and they can actually attract mm-hmm. more from the local community and that there but like the likes of ourselves we've got well over 100 Irish people there so we do and like I said a lot of them is county standard if not senior club uh, so it can be fairly intimidating as much as we try to make it as welcoming to other people but it can be fairly intimidating when mm. uh, local <clears throat> persons come in to see over 100 Irish people out on the pitch and they're just kicking balls. You know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. into each other. You know what they're doing, basically. So, yeah. I think probably. probably Levi, I've seen you kicking a slitter. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only way to play. That's the only way to, way to play that small balls for it. <laughs> is that the way they do it in, in North Dublin? It is. <laughs> well, I never even, I'd never even watched a hurling match before I moved to, um, to Dubai and I think that's probably so. something <laughs> very controversial to say but like my club wouldn't have even had a camogie club yeah. so when I moved out here and it was like we need players this weekend like you'll earn your drinks if you help if you help out and you play and I was like oh grand I'll do it and then just I, I keep saying this I'm like I don't play camogie but I'm going on to my sixth year playing so <laughs> I may start <laughs> taking up so <laughs> yeah you might you might as well you've got this far now you might as well just keep going I'd say uh, exactly yeah uh, um, you started. I, you started this one, James. So you've you've already mentioned a, a rivalry with the others. So who is the who's the ones when it comes to championship time that you are most eager to uh, get your hands on? I'm not sure what the other clubs have said, but I'd say uh, Abu Dhabi and Afian is the top team that everyone wants to beat. So they are, because mm-hmm. um, they're probably just the biggest club. They're probably usually throughout the divisions. They're usually there, thereabouts, at winning trophies and that there. Um, so they sort of set a bit of a benchmark for all the other clubs to try and match. I know two years ago, just before COVID and that there, I think we played them in two finals and lost them narrowly and lost extra time in a couple of games. So uh, that was with the senior men. Um, so I know there's probably a very good rivalry that year between, between the two clubs. Um, because there are such tight games and that there and uh, we're so close to getting them um, and I think it goes across even the girls would probably say the same thing for the ladies football camogie and the, f- the lads even for the hurling like you know they're you know Abu Dhabi have such a pick of the crop or crop of the players there like they, mm. you know, they can field as many county players as they want or they've got such talent there that you know we're always just trying to Get close to them and try and if get our day, get our day where we can actually maybe knock them off their perch. So yeah, 
Yeah, is it the same for ladies, Aoife? Yeah, definitely. Oh, we had we had awful times against Abu Dhabi over the last few years. Mm-hmm. It was my first year out here. They were kind of always getting us, maybe by a point or two. And then um, our second year, we were flying it, and we actually were managing to, you know, we I think we bet them in four tournaments in a row, and then that was oh. the COVID year as said as well. Um, but we're after lose, we lost them there in the last tournament in the semi final. So we kind of we don't we don't take that very well when we lose Abu Dhabi. Oh. Now. Rivalry, but um, look, we'll have them again soon again, and it's it's great that there's such a high level of competition. Like as James said, mm-hmm. the like you're never going to a tournament knowing that you'll either get hammered or you're not going to a tournament thinking you'll walk over a team. You're going, mm-hmm. and it's going to be a tough day out. Like no matter what, because the 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 competition is really really good, it's really mm-hmm. high standard. What's the last tournament you've got to play or host? Have you had anything since COVID? I've seen a few Instagram posts about different things have you got to play any tournaments Levi lately or yeah so we were actually the last tournament to host sorry we were the last club to host a tournament before COVID so it was literally the weekend of the 28th of February and I think then things in Dubai the following week everyone went to school on the Sunday Mm. and it was like okay school's closed now and that was the end of that and then we actually hosted just two weeks ago so that was the first football tournament um, of the 21-22 league uh, for the Middle East so that was brilliant so that was in our home grounds in Charge Wonders uh, and there was over 30 teams and it was a massively wow. competitive day like it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning and it, what the final probably ended at 7.15 7.20 like so they, I think we finished at 8 o'clock that day like so it was a, yeah. it was a long day of football so it was but it was probably good to see it back like you know there was plenty of good teams out there so it was and then the said uh, it's good to see a few different on it. Dwight Kaltz, um, I know our senior men's team lost the final, as much as disappointing that was like, but it was nice to see uh, Kaltz win it. As I said, Abu Dhabi are always about there, but you know, it's just, it was good to see somebody else kick it off, a uh, new team kick it off this year, and probably sets it up nicely for the rest of the league for the, uh, for the remainder of the year. So it does. Mm. You've kind of started a, it's like the old ABU, anyone but United in soccer. It's like anyone but Abu Dhabi in this one by the sounds of it. So. <laughs> or anyone but Dublin. <laughs> anyone but Dublin, yeah, that's exactly. exactly yeah. That's exactly yeah. what it's like. <laughs> yeah. Um, with the weather and stuff, like I've kind of chatted to a few teams about it. Like obviously Scottstown and Tullamore wouldn't be, you know, the tropics of paradise. Malahide might be now, obviously, in open and that part of England. But by the what's, sea. Yeah, obviously, yeah. What's the uh, what's the, like playing in the heat? I know you're probably this stage change. You're probably used to it, but originally it must have been torture. Uh, I don't think you ever properly get used to it, <laughs> so you don't. Um, it's still for tournaments, still fairly hot. Like you're still talking, you're probably over thirty degrees in the middle of the day for any tournaments so we are. Um, it's combining the heat, but also combining the the length of the breaks between games, like because the games are shorter. Hmm. you're bursting yourself for a little bit harder and then you're waiting around you're probably getting a little bit stiff and not there so that plays a part as well um, but I think for ourselves even we train very early in the evenings you know uh, I think the hurlers start at 4.30 and then the footballers start at 5 o'clock like that's very early compared to yeah. some of the other clubs so we actually sort of acclimatise ourselves a little bit uh, when it comes to tournaments and that there um, to the heat and it probably stands to us a little bit, but um, yeah, I don't think you ever properly get used to the heat, so you don't. Yeah. Um, and and on, on, on that with the heat, sorry, on that with the heat, like, so you've got the heat against you, you're playing a match, so you're bollocks doing that, and then after every match, players on each team have to umpire, so you're then umpiring the next match, so it's another 30 minutes right in the heat, and then, like, the way our club is run is it's volunteer-led, so then let's say one of the lads, he's playing himself and then he's running over to go coach another team after that. And then he's going running here and you're, you know, you're like, you're out on it all day. It's not just like you get to go play your 15 minutes and then you knock into the changing rooms and they see yeah. you're constantly yeah. on the go. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I could deal with that now. Have you found it the same for since your time out there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I'll never, <laughs> ever forget my first tournament in Dubai. I honestly thought I was gone. Like, I remember going into the dressing room at, after one of the first games. I think it had been maybe at 10 o'clock in the morning. You know, usually a normal enough temperature. It was September, maybe the middle of September. And going in and lying on the floor and just 
wondering how, like the, the room was spinning now I haven't had that experience since but <laughs> I honestly was wondering how are we going to get used to this like but in fairness you do like these months are fine you know once you hit October November December yeah. January they're all fine you know they're very manageable you can you know you play your game and you get a good rest as James was saying but definitely when you get around to those those uh, summer months uh, you want to make sure you're you're hydrating for the week you have your bag of jellies in the in the bag ready to mm -hmm. you know to get that sugar rush because um for sure like James said it doesn't really get any easier you know you don't really completely get used to used to that heat you know yeah sounds like packing a, a bag's uh, child's bag for school tour <laughs> More than yeah. your bag of jellies. Sun cream, yeah. jellies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you remember your first game, James? As Aoife mentioned, her first tour. And do you remember your first game or well, any highlights from the early days? My first game. Uh, I actually haven't played too much because I uh, I got a surgery in my shoulder last year, so I haven't actually played. My first tournament was in two years. Was just there last weekend, right. and it was actually for it was actually for a different club. So it was. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because of the way the teams worked out, I actually ended up uh, at a ring or short a few lads. Um, so I tugged out for the, with them for the day. And they were talking to a few guys after, apparently, is the talk of Russell Kama. So it was uh, <laughs> like, as Jamera, I was like, is that, Ma is that Michael Ear playing for, for a ring there? I was like, they couldn't understand us or starting to think I uh, moved to Abu Dhabi. So they did. Yeah. Is that why you wore the jersey Chair on today? Just, just to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the jersey on just to make sure that he knows what club he's for. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Uh, how does shoulder surgery go? Uh, good. Well, it's still hanging in place there so far. So um, <laughs> you'll find out when you good. batter some lad. <laughs> yeah, well, a few boys have run into me at training there. Uh, James Stewart and Maddock and the likes there. So they've given mm. it a good test there. So, have, so I'm happy enough with it so far. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> and Levi, do you remember your early days or first games? Kicking a schlitter. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh god in my first ever camogie game and I just didn't know the rules and I picked the slitter up off the floor like well off the grass I didn't know you weren't allowed to do that and I picked it up and I like grabbed my hurl and I just threw my hurl away and I kicked the kicked the ball and I was like woo I did so well and the ref blew it back for free and I was like excuse me you're allowed to kick the ball and he was like yes but you're not allowed to drop your hurl pick the ball up with your hand and then kick it <laughs> <laughs> I was so embarrassed because I was so confident that I was allowed to do what I did. Yeah, that's a, that's quite a highlight, though. In fairness, like there's not many people who could say that's their main <laughs> highlight of their early days is cheating their way to to try and try and play a mogi. So I presume you've that's improved. It. You've improved since that, have you? Well, I got the big senior call up this year, so you know we we yeah. have to say things are going well. That's always that's always a good sign, yeah. Um, I suppose if I go off the pitch for a minute, uh, Aoife, what's the what's the crack like in celebrations with Sharjah? Are you renowned party animals? I was just gonna say. I was the gonna the say other two here are just like, like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Afraid I was gonna say when when Is James said about that you know question? not that not that many locals playing or you know not that many people yeah. who aren't Irish playing. I said I was gonna say. Well, if they've ever come to the after party of the <laughs> tournament, that would scare anyone that's not Irish very, very quickly. Um, ah, listen, I, I don't think you can beat Charger when it, I'd like to charge you wonders when it comes to those after tournament celebrations. Like it's, you know, if, if you show the videos to people at home, it's just uh, an exaggerated celebration from home. Like, you know, those yeah. where you're stuck in a small pub, but here we're outside, there's live music and um, drinks are flowing like it's just this is this is what makes it even better you know it's and it's just the community everyone stays around we support the clubs that we're in so if we're playing in charge everyone will stay around and support that club and no matter how many people are after battering you on the pitch or you know how many curses you're after giving to the next person you probably know there's you probably know their sister's you know sister's cousin from home yeah. and you forget about it and you're chatting them about how everyone is at home then that night and it's mm -hmm. it really it you know everyone forgets about the competitive part of it and it's, it's something special I think about the UAE and about Sharjah actually and I think that is a reason why a lot of people don't want to go and play with other clubs you know and they test them out and they realize you know what actually I feel safe in Sharjah so I'm gonna go, <laughs> I'm gonna go back to my <laughs> so it's good Jess you haven't become you're not quite the stage of a, a drinking club with a football problem no 
Let's say no more. Steve boys like that. There, I yeah, like, I had a few. A few clubs admitted to the admitted to that been a more more likely to be their club in yeah. fairness. So they yeah. lost their drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, see, like, every turn, every tournament would be followed by like you're preparing for a tournament on a on a Wednesday night. So you finish training. You're preparing for the tournament that's going to happen on the Friday. You're packing your bag everything on the Wednesday. Thursday, you could be traveling down to the tournament, say it's in Abu Dhabi, or we're traveling to Bahrain now in a few weeks' time. Oh, nice. And then Friday, you're playing all day. Then you're out on the chair Friday night. Saturday <laughs> is rollover time, so you're out all day Saturday. You go to work crippled on Sunday. You're sitting on the couch once you get home, getting takeaway. And then Monday, you're like, okay, it's time. It's been almost a week now. I need to get my crap together again. <laughs> so it's yeah. every every tournament like a big big summer blowout. <laughs> That's class. Yeah. Have you been down to? Have you been around Bahrain and Oman? Have you gone tournaments outside of the sort of uh, Dubai area? Have you have you gone out to Bahrain and Kuwait and all these places before? This is my fifth time going to Bahrain, mm-hmm. and all right. I've seen is the football pitch and the Irish pub. Sounds about right, yeah. I'm dying to go to Bahrain. It's it's one of the one of the places around that part of the world that have, it's probably one of the few that have not been to. Uh, and we've an SNA in our school who's from uh, Bahrain and always tells us how lovely it is. So I'm uh, I'm jealous to see to see Bahrain and see what it's like. Um, have you much of a rivalry with kind of do you get to come up against those guys less often, or is it you just generally up against the guys around you? So with the Middle East League, we'd all be in it together the whole time. Um, so we'd be with the sorry, my housemates have just come home from their training. They're from Jamaica. Um, we don't want to talk to them. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, they uh, so we'd all be in the same Middle East league together. So mm. every tournament we come to, there'd be teams traveling from Bahrain, Oman, Qatar, Kuwait, Saudi. So yeah, we would come up against them um, with each tournament that we play in. So two weeks ago, when we hosted the tournament, we had two teams from Bahrain. And also two teams from Qatar that traveled out for it. Okay, sounds pretty good. Yes. Um, how are you like on James? With uh, a few few of the lads, one before I started this, were asking, "What well, about the Middle East club? Surely they're just all loaded with oil money." <laughs> Have you got uh, much issue with the money side? Have you do a lot of fundraising, or is it all right for you? For ourselves, anyway, I think it's it's hard enough for us to try and attract uh, many sponsors. So does because. Uh, we're all, I think we're 99% or I think we're probably 100% teachers. So we don't quite have the same contacts that some of the other clubs might have in terms of companies and that there. So uh, we're very fortunate we have Sharjah Wanderers there. Um, we do a lot of our fundraising through that there, for, through them. And then we also have Fibber McGee's, they sponsor us. Right. Um, so we do. So a lot of our fundraising, the, whatever we can subsidize and pay for the players and that there comes through basically getting players in and uh, getting them to go drinking basically in charge of wanderers or fibbers mm-hmm. and that so um it's really it's probably a, it's the best of the day we can get for them that uh to to support the club they basically just have to go drinking and have a good time and that there so there's really so they can't really i'm sure they're them. devastated about having to do that yeah well, <laughs> probably complain on a sunday <laughs> sunday morning so they but. I oh, yeah, well, sure. So. Look, it's part it's part part of the part of the track, isn't it? So, yeah. uh, I suppose put the trivia on the spot uh, a little bit. Aoife, has there been a highlight of the on the pitch or off the pitch so far with the club that stands out? I think Bahrain. There's absolutely a highlight. Bahrain 2019 um, was probably the most joy I've ever felt after. Um, a football match in, in my life, I think. I'll never, ever forget it. We were, we had won out the tournament. We'd just beaten Abu Dhabi, the rivals. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the whole stand was just full with really drunk Irish people because <laughs> they'd, been, they'd been drinking all day. And obviously this was like a late game, maybe 6.30 in the evening. And they were just screaming, like screaming, jumping, shouting. And uh, I think we, we might have bet them by like a couple of points. It was a close game. And I just, I'll never forget that feeling. I think, Levi, you sent in the video the other day and it was just everyone jumping around the stand, mm-hmm. drinks everywhere. And it just, I, I, I don't even, it's, it's, it's a hard feeling to describe, but it's something that I don't think I'll ever forget. Like, it stands out as, as really just a moment where you're like, God, it was the right decision to come here. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, I, and you just meet some of the most amazing and supportive people. Um, 
so it's, it's actually hard to put it into words but that's definitely a highlight for me yeah that's class, yeah. It's probably like when Offaly won something back in the 1980s, the last time they won anything. So, yeah. <laughs> back, when, back when I was still in nappies, probably. <laughs> same as, same as, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, what about you, Lee, boys, your standout moment? You know, I actually think mine was seeing the senior herders win. So they had like a really bad rut. They were getting to loads of finals. They weren't winning at all. And then in, I think it could have been 2018, and it was actually a home tournament. And they won it for the very, very first time. So it was their first ever senior cup. Uh, and it was a home tournament and everyone was just buzzing. I just remember the next three days was just like session after session. And it was just unbelievable to see all their hard work pay off. Like I wouldn't think myself in that, but I just remember that day just being like, they've done it. Like this is brilliant. And it was yeah. just such a good day for the club. That's class. That's a nice um, memory to have. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily involve yourself as such. That's even a, uh, we put down the kick in the camogie, you know, kicking and Kimogi, <laughs> kicking the schlitter is your other highlight so yeah uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah and James what about you uh, hard to pick I think too many of them too many that's good that's always a good yeah. sign yeah uh, <laughs> Barry in there was definitely a couple of good memories or lack of memories there I know so there is <laughs> um, but I'd say <clears throat> a f- football tournament we hosted there two weeks ago ourselves um, obviously is our f- the first tournament back since COVID um, is probably my first tournament to be properly organising as well. Um, and then just to see over 30 clubs, it was about five, 600 people there maybe, um, watching the games and that there, just dr- drinking, having the crack, we had music and all that there going. And I'd say it was just a, a mad night and just it was a great day to have playing mm-hmm. football and that there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was just... It was just Great to see it all back and then just everybody enjoying themselves and just everything sort of back to no- normal in some so- sort of way. And anyway, I so it was. Yeah, it's gas. You say like five, six hundred in a match when like county finals here, we might struggle to get yeah. five, six hundred in the county final. Uh, like, yeah. It's yeah. mad. I think yeah. it, another massive highlight for all of us would be is so if you're in a cup final, so in any cup final at a tournament, you line up for the national anthem. So all the teams that are in the, the, in the final, they'll line up. So you're lining up there and you're singing the national anthem and everyone, all the eyes and everything are on you and it's just such a proud moment. And then it's unbelievable when you get a line up. So let's say the senior girls are in the final, the intermediate girls are in the final and then the senior lads are in the final as well. And you've got like just an army of charge people yeah. all lined up for the, the national anthem. Abu Dhabi always get it and on some occasions <laughs> sorry to get it and it's very good <laughs> that's fast I uh, I didn't realise there was there was the anthems and stuff nobody kind of mentioned that before that's uh, that's pretty cool at the finals do you get like shake whoever to come out Does are they throwing the ball into the finals since that picture years ago that I saw at like the Middle East finals have you had anyone like that come out since no we don't we don't I don't think we go that, that as formal as that there nice no, or not but uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I don't think we got too many uh, dignitaries or yeah. Michael, Higg- Michael Higgins to be able to fly out to shake the hands mm-hmm. of the show. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the next one. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> there was times, but I think a good few years back, didn't Pat Spillane and a load of them go out to manage teams as part of the, the Middle East thing? You haven't, inv- you haven't invited them out, have you? No, I don't know if Pat Spillane, Pat Spillane would be a bit too controversial to take out here, so he could be. Oh, there's mid- I think I think Pat, Pat Spillane would be going straight to Middle East, Kerry, GA, somehow I can... I, I, so, I, I, I don't think he'd be jumping to eat. Um, and what's the future like, Aoife, then for Sharjah before I throw a few quickfire questions at you? The future is the next tournament, I suppose. And hopefully that, you know, the main mm. thing, I suppose, this year is getting people back playing, getting people back you know, anyone who's come over maybe in the last year or two, bringing those, bringing them into, you know, the community that's there in charge. You know, last year was tough for anyone coming over because they didn't actually have that outlet that we were very mm. lucky to have when we came over. So I suppose growing as a club again is probably um, the main aim. Again, it's probably more of a question for James, I guess, as well. But like, that's the way I would see it, that I would hope that charge will grow again, you know, and that it can get as many people uh, to, to see what it's, you know, that, that experience as, as like, like how we're describing it now. Mm. I want in two, two years for more people to be saying the same thing, you know, and to have the same experience. And more Westmead people, less awfully. Okay, sounds good, yeah. And uh, James. Oh, careful, careful. <laughs> <laughs> same thing, James, is it? Yeah, um, I think, as I said, the start of this year, when I was getting a new committee in place and that, I think it was just... Mm. 
try and get a bit of life back with the club, get teams back out training, get playing games and all that there. So it was um, just to you know, try and bring back a few of the memories of the, the last couple of years and that there, just to bring it back to the new people and out there and show them what Charlotte Gales was really about. Um, so next year, uh, 2022, is a big year for the club as well. It's our 10th anniversary since we were founded. Oh, brilliant. Um, so we're... Just Putting, I'm at the minute putting together uh, our organising committee and trying to put it together a few plans uh, for throughout 2022. Obviously, we've, we're hosting a hurling tournament in the Middle East in Sharjah in, the, in January. So my hope is that we can really sort of kick off the celebrations there. Um, and the plan is to hopefully finish off with sort of a big reunion with past and present uh, Sharjah Gales okay. members back in Ireland. Um, hopefully find a few pitches, uh, get a few mini tournaments between past and new members and that there. And um, hope as well to maybe, we had a few members, Emmett Blaine and Paul Carey, that um, unfortunately passed away very suddenly over the, over the years since the club was founded. Uh, so it would be my hope that uh, next summer we can maybe organise some sort of uh, games with their own home clubs. I know we had Keane Lynch out a few weeks ago uh, for uh, Paul's tournament and um, Cain was Paul's nephew and I okay. sort of just mentioned the idea to him and he was all for it he was very excited about the idea so um, definitely hopefully to try and get something like that there organised I think would be great just to bring in their families as part of the Sharjah Gales family as well so it would be great and then obviously yeah. we'll finish off with like a dinner dance um, back home and we can properly celebrate like the, as we mm. do in Sharjah so, yeah that sounds class. Um, it's handy. This obviously it'll be twenty twenty two when people are listening to this with the the yeah. streaming anyway. So it'll it'll work out handy yeah. for your anniversary. Yet. Yeah, um, yeah. The last date. Last date. We should hopefully have a bit more of the uh, information finalising that there, and it'll be a better idea of what's what's happening next year. Oh, I'll I'll be there somehow. Should she have a hate West Mead, girls? You can come down here to Mullingar, play uh, <laughs> play in West Mead here. Sure, you might as well. Um, I'll bring yeah, it. That's, your club can house us too. Exactly, we'll find a club that'll host you here somewhere. Um, Needs Bellman will get Kenny Gad or someone there, or Mulligar Shamrocks down the road here, Lomans or someone. Yeah. So, uh, I'll 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 probably have a, a small child by then, so I'll have to bring the child to referee. Um, at some point. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, the yes, yeah, uh, definitely. Well, it might be able to referee. I'll just leave it sitting in the middle of the pitch, and sure, he or she, he or she, he or she can referee from the halfway line like a true GA referee does. So you know you're. <laughs> Um, they, the, they, can't, they can't be as bad as some of the referees are good out here. Anyway, so, but, oh, I won't uh, go into that, Jesus. Like, I caused <laughs> awful, awful trouble already with some some referees uh, at home and abroad. So I'll, I'll say nothing there. Um, the quick fire questions. Then there's one new one actually. You're the first have a go. This very very bizarre new question that one random listener said saw a TikTok video of something and said you should add that into your GA yoke for the crack. And I said right, I will. So it's down the list. I'll I'll tell you when we get to it. Uh, <laughs> Le- Levi on the ladies side who's the ladies tough nut at the club who everyone is afraid of and might get sent off or is just really good at drinking one or the other Annie Higgins <laughs> she like <laughs> we couldn't get her on the podcast and like it's the biggest surprise of the year that she didn't want to get on because all she does to do, loves to do is talk about herself but okay. uh, she's an absolutely unbelievable player I have to mention that she once played AFL for Ireland um, but she's just she's just one of those people that you're in their company and they're just having the crack like referees should be pissing them off but then they'll be laughing with her two seconds later so yeah. she's just fantastic love it love it sounds good Chief, is there anyone else you want to add or are you happy enough with that for the ladies no, I'm I'm happy with that decision yes very much for <laughs> heroes <laughs> So I'm sure she's delighted she's getting it. <laughs> neither of you said you're each other or yourselves, um, which is you know very convenient that she didn't say anything. So, uh, and, uh, James, what about on the lads' side then? I'd say I'd probably have to give uh, give it to Dean O'Reilly. He's be a, yeah. a rare a rare breed from Calvin, so he would um, tough nut and even tougher on the drink there. So he so he would be as well. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, he, he goes hard at it. He goes hard at it either way. So he does. Oh, brilliant! Uh, that's a good, that's a good line for him. So, uh, <laughs> is there a club karaoke song of choice? A favorite song? Uh, zombie. Zombie. Oh, zombie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, or the club, club song. We have a club yeah, song club as well. Anthem, club anthem, the Charge Gale song. So we do. So. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, do you want to give us a verse or will I just YouTube it? 
Go on, James. Oh, I can't sing hey, so I'm not going to sing it now. I'll, I'll send you on. I'll send you on a link. On, yeah, give me the link. Uh, who, who wrote that or how <laughs> did you get that? Or? So actually one of our founders, um, a guy called Owen Cantwell, who's actually living in Mullingar now as well, and right. himself, and if he was friends, wrote it. So he, he's been out here the last few years, so he's normally the one singing it. Uh, but he's gone home now, but we have the a DJ copy, so the DJ likes to throw it in now and then at the tournaments. Surely somebody around here will know who Owen Cantwell is. So I'll have to send a few messages out and see if we can find him. And I want to get the original copy. I want I want it sung at the Joe Dolan statue here in the middle of the town, <laughs> or, else or else it's not good enough. Uh, okay, so you got a club song. I have to remember that one. Uh, this one mm-hmm. is nearly an unfair question at this stage because poor Des Cahill is getting obliterated. But um, Eve, are you in the Marty Party or the Des Cahill fan club? Mm. Absolutely, Marty. Marty. Okay, uh, Levi, are you the same? Oh, there's no party like a Marty party. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Okay, uh, James, are you sticking with uh, Marty or? I just have to go th- three for three there for the okay. Marty party. <laughs> I think I'll just stop asking the question because, like, Des Cahill, God bless him, is a lovely man, but uh, he's getting murdered in this one, so I'll just stop asking. That. <laughs> uh, I probably know the answer to this one, but uh, just to confirm it, I suppose, James, the toughest team you've ever come up against. Maybe I could ask the toughest team you've ever played for club back home or for Sharjah either. Uh, played against, against it, yeah. at home. Um, anywhere, even uh, even the toughest in the Middle East, I presume, is Abu Dhabi. So, I actually haven't been able to get playing against Abu Dhabi yet myself or right. Sharjah. Yeah, uh, so I haven't. Mm-hmm. Um, like maybe once in the at the very start when I come out there, I think Abu Dhabi's uh, Abu Dhabi is always the team to beat in uh, in the Middle East. Anyway, so we are. Um, back home. Uh, obviously, Scotstown is the team I'm hoping don't win, don't win this weekend. Because uh, obviously, my father played for Scotstown, my brother played for Scotstown, and I went and played for the Shawns, who are in the junior championship final. Who are in the junior championship final this weekend? Uh, any any so, wonder you had to emigrate? Well, that's okay. <laughs> I was drove out of the high schools, really. <laughs> I'd say so. Yes. Okay. So Scotstown. Then Aoife, is it a a gone far with? Tullamore, you going down to road or what about in charge? Are you sticking with Abu Dhabi? Abu Dhabi definitely for Sharjah. And <clears throat> um, I actually play with I play with a small club just outside Tullamore. It's actually it's actually out towards the road direction in between Tullamore and, and Road. But uh, uh the, the the strongest club in, in Offaly for the women is probably um Nave Kiron, which is over for ban for ban mm. direction. They're they're absolutely phenomenal ladies footballers over there, you know. Um so they're definitely the the, str- the biggest opponents for me if I was playing at home for sure okay who, who is your club at home my club it's called Nave Molish it's uh, basically Killy Dangan area okay that's yeah. uh, okay I have a fair idea where that is I think um, it's in Offaly anyway I'll find it Captain Kerr is Captain Kerr is the name where I'm from oh yeah sure know that yeah I know fairly well uh, yeah. Levi what about you then with uh, Sylvester's or out there um I can't even think, to be honest. I'd say now with, with Sharjah anyway, uh, Al mm-hmm. Green there, I play intermediate and we, we lost by a point in the cup final there two weeks ago. So I'd say they'll be our biggest opponents for the year. Um, but th- their club, very like ourselves, they'd be a lot of young kind of teachers in it and they're only new to the Middle East. Um, they're a few years younger than us. So you like seeing them do well as well. But okay. uh, we'll be fighting on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Sounds good. Um, the are you as a as a men's side, James? Are you short pass or drive it long? <clears throat> it's, a, it's a strict uh, hand pass, no kick pass allowed. I think I, I, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the new manager, the new manager Jaxie, is trying to get in a bit more kick pass in there, so, he is, so he's being a bit more adventurous. But um, yeah, it's I think the game the game out here is fairly tactical, so it is yeah. and. The possession is case because you know it's, it's definitely mm. a senior level. If you go a point up, or if you go a score up, uh, you're basically in control of the game. So you are, um, and you're just nearly trying to drive down the clock uh, okay. until the game is off. So okay, uh, same, same. Yes, possessions. The possessions king. Up. Yeah. Uh, same for the ladies. Then, if is it? Um, no, it's actually a very different approach in the ladies' game. Um, I've often kicked the ball from halfway and hope for the best that it goes in over the keeper's head, to be honest, um, <laughs> which is great. No, there's a, to be honest, um, there's a lot more kick passing in the ladies game. You know, there's, of course, there's, you know, it's fast as well, but 
we integrate kick passing a lot more, which I love definitely. Mm. Okay, uh, sounds good. So a bit of bit of both then. Uh, Levi, you have a choice of the famous GA outside Crow Park. You can buy a hat, a flag, a scarf, or a headband. Which are you buying? <clears throat> a hat. A hat. Okay. Ski slopes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Aoife, what are you buying? Um, a scarf. Scarf. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, and James? You think it'd be the scarf? As well, yeah. Fair. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I think the hats are still in the lead slightly. Uh, is there a favorite Father Ted uh, episode out in Sharjah among the gang? The year before we actually came, they had a Father <laughs> Ted. Well, for the year before I came, they had a Father Ted fundraiser, and they all had to dress up as people from Father Ted, and it looked like some crack. <laughs> Maybe we can bring that back sometime. That sounds, sounds <laughs> like a plan, yeah. Uh, is there even because uh, I've had to kind of change it slightly? Derry Girl seems to be popping up a lot more among clubs rather than Father Ted, which is which is fine. It's devastating and breaking my heart, but other than that, it's fine. Um, is there? Yeah, is there? It's Father Ted all the way, really. So does. Yeah, it's Father Ted. Yeah, I won't accept anything else. Yeah, have you have you brought Father Ted and Derry Girls out to the the Middle East? Yeah, I think I for think me, me and the my old housemate Brandon, I think does the uh, Father Ted was the old reliable hangover cure. So it was, and I you know, just <laughs> when, we're lying, when we're lying there in the pits of depression, you'd put that on just to maybe cheer you up a little bit. Sounds good. And I think that I think that's sort of the uh, Brandon Grace. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, Fintan Stack. Yeah, Fintan Stack is one is one of the yeah. is one of the good ones. Yeah. Sounds good. Yes, uh, drilling holes in the walls out in charge. So by the sounds of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this one then is the. New one, uh, and it's a very strange question, but I said it just a bit of crack to ask it anyway. Uh, James, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you have to get a tattoo of a GA player. Where are you getting it, and who is it of? Jesus. The two girls are now going, Jesus Christ, what am I thinking here? <laughs> <laughs> um, Rory Tass- Began. Who are you getting so? That's a tough one there now. So one of the girls you can answer if you if you've if you've decided already. Does it have to be a famous GA player? Not necessarily, no. Okay, well, one of my teammates got my name tattooed on her bum, so I'll do the same back for her. <laughs> <laughs> what? How the <laughs> that happened? It was it was a big night out in Thailand and she thought it was funny. <laughs> yep. It is still quite funny, so I guess I'll return the favour. I'll get Greer. <laughs> Greer on my right bum cheek. That's fantastic. Okay, that's you're the, officially the first person to answer that question. So well done. And it was <laughs> that'll be that answer will be hard bet by anybody who comes on in the future. To be honest, so uh, <laughs> love it. Yes, E for James. Yeah. If he, uh, you can pass by the way, obviously as well. If you don't want to answer, I don't okay. know if there's beating that. Yeah, I think we're just. I think that's the. It's hard to top that one now. So it is. Okay. Uh, so that, I'll take that, leave that, I'm that question's really. I wasn't expecting that sort of question. Yep. I was already <laughs> put, put you on the spot. Like, yep. Nobody was because it's the first time I've asked it. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's exactly why. Okay, I'm gonna go with Levi's answer. Is like the setting the bar, and if anyone can top that, I would be absolutely stunned. So that put <laughs> that put Charge in the lead overall. Uh, and then Woo. the the greatest GA player ever in your lifetime. Who would you pick? Aoife or Levi or James, whoever wants to throw in. <clears throat> Seamus Darby, Dear McConnelly, and Rory Began. I can smell the three answers already. <laughs> oh, I want to change it up a little bit. Hmm. I'm going to go for a girl and pick a fellow club woman, Sinead Ahern, who's Brilliant. still playing all these years later and yep. has just won the inter-championship with our club there at home. Last Unbelievable week, but... footballer, yeah. Yeah. Made her and okay. She's a first on the list, actually. I haven't had her on the list yet, so definitely oh. nice to have her onto the list. Uh, see for James, anyone coming to mind? I so was a big fan of uh, Dermot Early. Oh, brilliant. Back, yeah, I thought he was just one of the <laughs> best midfielders in the country, so he was um, he was just a machine in the middle of the field, especially during the it was the Kieran McGinney peak mm-hmm. years. Um, he was I think, I think he got an all star, so he did one of the years, and he's yeah, you know, he's def- he was definitely up there as one of the best midfielders in the country at the time. So he was brilliant. Yes, he's uh, he's been mentioned once, and Johnny Doyle mentioned him as well when he was on for 
chatting with me as well, he mentioned him as one of the one of the greats as well. So and if you've been thinking as if you were studying for the leaving cert down there. Yeah, I'm doing all thinking because I'm not great with names. This is the problem, and I know I'm gonna mix two names. To be honest, I think uh, some of the displays of hurling at home are just outrageous. You know, like mm. you always think that there are great footballers uh, and there have been for years and years. But I think the display of hurling for me is so impressive at the at the moment in Ireland. And, uh, you know, they like the lads from the, the Tipperary team there, the Kilkenny teams. They just every time I go home for the summer and I'm watching the matches, I'm blown out of the water. So be one of them and probably be the likes of Brendan Maher, one of them from, from Tip um, that I just think are outrageous or, Lim, or Limerick, you know, like um, this year, outrageous. I can't even, I don't think I can pick yep. specific names, but just I, Hurling really stands out for me as as the a, a display of GA. Brilliant, yeah. Brendan Maher is a good shout, actually. I don't think he's come up yet and that's kind of surprising here. None, none of the Maher family have come up at all, which is, uh, which is mad. Um, the last few then are just the Middle East ones and these are just... Uh, Completely stupid. As if you listen to any of their episodes, they're absolutely ridiculous. Some of them are actually the same as I gave to Jamaira, and then I did some googling for the history of Sharjah and all that. So I found a few new ones. So um, if you can choose between, actually, this is an interesting one: um, the Friday or Saturday weekend, or the Saturday Sunday weekend. Which do you prefer? Um, <clears throat> early early leave on Friday and Saturday Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> nice okay three day weekend yeah, Saturday, yes. Sunday. yep Grant Levi what about you a Saturday Sunday just to be in sync with the rest of the world because even like when you look at like sporting fixtures and stuff mm. like that that doesn't fall on our weekend which messes yep. it up for sure yep good yeah. James what about you <clears throat> I'd probably go uh, Friday Saturday purely because when we're heading to brunch at 12 o'clock on a <laughs> Friday, Friday here <laughs> It's about at nine o'clock at home and people are starting to head to work there. So it's uh, when the Instagram stories are going up. Uh, <laughs> rub, rub it in the face a little bit to the people at home. Yeah, you get more views when people at home are just sitting depressed yeah. at work. Yeah, okay, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you awesome, like, yeah exactly. Plenty of abuse, I'd say. Uh, you can correct me on my pronunciations here, but you can choose between backpacking uh, or the Chedi Al... Buy it hotel is that right the fancy hotel apparently it's in Sharjah am I completely is that a non-existent place that I've just made up apparently it's some fancy hotel We're learning out there. something new <laughs> apparently some really fancy hotel uh called the Al Bayat or Bait Hotel I don't know how to spell it a nice hotel mm-hmm. or backpacking will make it easier backpacking yeah back to Thailand I'd say by the sounds of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a nice hotel all day, unfortunately. I'd love to say a backpacking, but I'm, I like my comfort. Luxuries. Tell more court <laughs> yeah. hotel. Tell more court hotel or the bridge house. Bridge Do house, exactly. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> what, about, what about you, James? Uh, I'd probably go for the nice hotel, but maybe not in charge of seeing as it's uh, a dry state. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Probably, I'm going to go somewhere there's a bit of a drink. Lovely. Sounds good. Uh, a camel ride in the desert, Levi, or a piggyback after a night out? <clears throat> Oh, I'll take you back. <laughs> okay, James, which one? Straight home from Coppers. That's a, yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, it's definitely a Coppers piggyback you're getting, yeah. <laughs> I think you go piggyback, I think they're more comfortable than a camel ride, so they are. Okay, fair enough. And Aoife, you get piggyback yeah, we'll out of the Tullamore Court. We'll go, we'll go with the same. We'll go with the same. Once they don't pick up any speed and trip over, <laughs> that'll be right. Fair <laughs> enough. I don't know if piggyback could get you from Tullamore to Captain Curdo, would it? Uh, dep- depends on how many drinks is in, are in the system. It depends on who's carrying it, how many drinks they've had as well. So. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, the last bit then, uh, the jersey then, since uh, I've tried to promote a bit of the jerseys, I know um, this won't go out till after Christmas, we're just trying to promote the jerseys and stuff for the clubs in general. So I presume O'Neill's James is where people can find the Sharjah Gales gear. Yeah, um, we actually got the new jersey designs this year, so we did. Um, I sort of noticed on the, I think you did the competition a couple of weeks ago with Kels and did the old jersey up, but uh, we got that the new jersey. That didn't happen, I didn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Put it up again next year. Yeah. Uh, so when it is, yeah, when it is, do the jerseys, um, so they do. we got new ones there this year, and hopefully, obviously, the 10 year anniversary or planning maybe a, a commemor- commemoration jersey of some sort coming out as lovely. well yeah the commemorative ones are lovely there's somewhere behind me there's the new set wales one they do the commemorative jersey is good because you can have a bit of crack with it as well so um yeah yeah, exactly. yeah they've they've all the names of um yeah they've all the names of like the founding members from a long time ago so 
you could just put that and you know just random random other people and people from the bar and Fibber McGee's and so many options you can have for that jersey so uh but yeah the the green one for anyone who's listening if you haven't uh if you haven't seen it it's uh it's like the Westmead away kit uh, it's that nice green color so uh all the Westmead people should buy it definitely uh and is mm-hmm. there anyone then Levi before I let you go anyone you want to give a shout out to back in St. Sylvester's or elsewhere around the world uh, I guess everyone who like would have played with us over the years and that who made the bad decision to return home are to swap clubs uh, that hopefully we see you now during the summer for the 10 year anniversary. Lovely. Sounds good. If anyone, uh, oh, and your friend, of course, Levi, you have to shout out to what's that girl's name who tattooed her, her arse or <laughs> go on. <Green. laughs> yeah. Shout out to her as well. Yeah. The legend of the podcast. Uh, and if you you, anyone back in Tullamore? Um, I'm afraid to name any names because I know I'll forget people then. I'll yeah. give a shout out to, same as Levi, anyone who's left, I suppose, um, and tell them that they're always welcome back. Um, good, yeah. Because they're, the, you know, we've sh- shared great memories of people that have moved home. So, um, yeah, just a shout out. I'm not going to name any names because I don't want to name any names. But, That's all right, yeah. yeah hello to, right. hello to yeah. everyone. And uh, shout out to Greer as well if you're getting a mention <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> That's, yep. Shout out to everyone in Parker's Dry Cleaners in Tullamore where my mother used to work as well. So <laughs> great one. Love it. I forgot I forgot to do that yet. That's brilliant. Uh James, anyone back? Anyone back in Monaghan? Uh well, by the time this podcast comes up, but hopefully it'll be saying congratulations to the Sean's after winning the junior championship at the weekend. Um, Ooh, interesting. Hopefully, hopefully anyway. Um but yeah, I think just see the lads back home and that there. And then obviously, as Levi said, it'd be great to past members of Charge Gales and that there just be great to get to seeing them again next summer the reunion should surely be a, a right party yeah Wherever sounds like a good crack yeah um, was there any before the girls maybe uh, any good stories about any Spellman or Kira Blundell that I can uh, accidentally spread around to anybody anything did they cause any fights written because I, I could it's Neve just teaches out the road here I can go out and annoy her so not no crack <laughs> with, no, no crack with the two of them no they're usually very well behaved. Shy crack, the they two were. of them. So, yeah, shy crack. Okay. I can yeah. make something up for you, though. I can make something up. <laughs> this, this one time, Kira <laughs> beat me up. And uh, <laughs> no, they're, they were great girls. They were uh, always part of the party, yeah. but I don't think they ever overstepped the mark in fairness to them. They always yeah. knew where the line was, unlike some of us. <laughs> two, two good footballers, in fairness to them as well. So, uh, doing, doing West Me Proud good. as well, which is great. So, uh, lads, look, thanks so much for coming on and giving up uh, what time is it like 10 o'clock there is it or 11 o'clock um i'm sorry for keeping you on long but uh yeah. it's such good crack chat and tea and uh you've inspired me i'm dying to go back out to the middle east for the well, i don't know how many times at this stage but uh yeah i'd love okay. to get back out to see to see the club and see everton at, at some stage but uh thank you so much for giving up your time and i'll keep in touch as to when this is uh going out just with baby on the way in march i decided to try and do all the recordings now and just let them stream as they come up because uh I don't think in between changing nappies, I'll have much time to stream uh, or too much. So, uh, yeah, but uh, I'll let you guys go and thanks so much and I'll, I'll keep in touch with you as well. Perfect. Thanks, thanks for your Best thanks luck with the new arrival. Thanks a million as yeah, well. Best yeah, best luck here. Yeah, thanks a million. Talk to you again soon, Sloan. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Coming up the next day on the Loaf of Bread GA Global, we cut into our next slice. Have you, uh, have you trans- transferred the skills of Ronaldo or Martha to the uh, Portuguese scene? I wish, but you know, I, I try a bit, but I won't say I'm that good. That's okay. Is, she's certainly got Martha's goal scoring touch. I was going to say, yeah, is is Martha still the, the number one female yeah. star in Brazil? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's pretty insane. I've seen her play quite a few times, and she's uh, she's she's tough. Yeah, much as anything she's, else. she's really good. She's really good, and I would say her results it's better than the the males one. You know, yeah. like I think she already scored more than. On Slice Fifty Three next Monday, I meet the gang from the famous Portugal GEA. I chat with Luana from Brazil, Hugo from Portugal, John from Cork, and the mystery guest, an All Ireland winning member of the Cork panel from two thousand and ten, who was revealed near the end of the chats. We talk all about Hugo living next to Markovic Park in Sligo for a time, the Portugal-Ireland historical links, John's time at Bishopstown GA and beginning Newcastle Sunderland University GA, playing versus Galway in Salt Hill, training in Belém, 
and the amazing run their kit had on the podcast GA Jersey World Cup in October last. Also, a beautiful story about Hugo's son's dream, and the mystery star reveals himself and tells us about being part of the All-Ireland winning panel in 2010. That's next Monday from 9am as we continue the journey with two slices a week. I'll see you at the arrivals hall, but until then, check out the various clubs on the Instagram page and see all the amazing work they do and some of the nicest GA gear going. Find the podcast on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter and on TikTok. Email loafofbreadpod at gmail.com or just simply hit the follow button and spread the word of the Loaf of Bread GA pod across the globe. Slonagy.